In this Warframe Beginner's Guide, we're going to take a look at the best early game weapons Warframe has to offer for you so you can turn your early game into an absolute joke and easily deal with all the enemies the game throws at you. But before we start our list, what even is a new player? What even is a new player weapon? If you ask me, a new player weapon is every weapon between Mastery Rank 0 and Mastery Rank 4. Why 4? Well, if you're just casually playing the game, you know, you do your everyday mission, you progress to the star chart, you level the weapons and warframes that you're using anyway, and you're not dedicating any specific grind to ranking up your mastery, you're going to be ending up at mastery rank 4 around mid star chart without having to go through any specific struggle. Everything beyond that will require you to do a certain bit of grinding mastery experience, but mastery rank 4 should be just fine. So that would be where I draw the line. Also, with the gameplay scenes for all the weapons in the background, I made sure to run a really beginner-friendly setup that I'm also going to show you for every single weapon, with just a couple of easy-to-get mods, not even on full rank, so you can see how the weapon would realistically perform if you, as a new player, would actually play it, and you're not being fed some completely unrelated late-game build footage. And starting into our list, we're going to look at a melee weapon, and that's the Silva and Aegis. The Silver and Aegis is a sword shield combination and one thing that really stands out with this one is it has a high status chance of 20% at base and it comes with innate heat damage, meaning you don't need a heat mod to put heat damage on this weapon. And that's good for two reasons. First, you only need one additional mod to get a combined element out of this and especially in the early game where you probably don't have all the elementals yet, that can be a huge boost if you don't have a heat mod for example, use the Silver and Aegis you don't need one to make gas, for example, radiation or blast. And for a mastery rank 0 weapon, having a standard status chance of 20% is also pretty huge and shouldn't be underestimated. To get your hands on the Silva and Aegis, you need to get the blueprint for the research from your clan's dojo. And at this point, I want to quickly talk about clans and clan weapons. I'm fully aware that a lot of players don't really like the fact that you have to be in a clan to get access to a lot of weapons in the game. The problem is, however, a lot of clan weapons are really good and you can't really go without them. And I fully agree, I also don't like the game basically forcing you into a clan in order to be able to get those, however, it also isn't really difficult. No matter which platform you're on, you basically just need to go into your recruit chat and say, hey, I'm a new player, I'm searching for a clan, or go on the subreddit and ask the same question, and no matter if you're just in it for the blueprints or if you're actually searching for a companionship in the game, there are a lot of clans just blindly inviting everybody because they are also aware of the problem with the whole blueprint blueprint stuff and they understand the worries, so if you just want the blueprints, there are a ton of big clans just blindly inviting everybody who wants to be invited, then you can get your blueprints there and nobody's gonna force any clan business or forceful interaction on you, so it's really not that big of a deal. This is also why we're gonna include quite some clan weapons in today's list, because I actually don't think it's that big of a deal to get into one. But coming back to the Silva and Aegis, I really like this one at Mastery Rank 0 already, because with its innate heat damage, it's a brilliant choice against, for example, Infested, either you use just the heat damage, or if you have, you can put on Toxin, have Gas damage, which does even more damage against Infested, so if you're bothered by those Infested suckers, get the Silva and Aegis, and they're gonna be bothered by you. The next weapon on our list is also Mastery Rank 0 and also serves a very, very similar role to the Silva and Aegis. I mean, to be fair, the Silva and Aegis is a sword-shield combination and this one, the Lecta, is a whip, so geometically pretty different if you ask me, but from the stats the roles are pretty much the same. Silva and Aegis has high status chance and 8 heat damage, Lecta also has innate electricity damage, also high status chance even a little bit higher than the Silva and Aegis. Which means all the same points apply that I also made on the Silva and Aegis, you have electricity on the weapon already, you have quite a high status chance. Meaning, you could throw on Toxin to have Corrosive, which is high damage potential against Grenier, especially in the early game where the armor isn't really that important, and also if you're more worried about Corpus, no problem, just hit on 
some cold damage and together with the electricity you're gonna have magnetic as you also see in the background which means on a status effect you're gonna cripple enemy shields and even if you're not hitting a status effect the magnetic damage does big bonus against shields anyway so if you don't like corpus use the lecta and you see it in the background even against mid-level star chart corpus even with just some cheap mods the lecta already does a great job and the best thing is you don't need to be in a clan for this one you can just buy the blueprint from the market assemble it in your foundry and you got yourself the lecta but enough with the melees, let's actually look at a gun. Guns are nice and we're gonna make a transition into mastery rank 1 with the Strun shotgun. If you like shotguns, that's good because we're gonna have quite some of them on the list and admittedly, shotguns in Warframe are pretty nice, you know? If you play video games, you know shotguns are good when it comes to close range combat if you get up close and personal to your enemy and with Warframe's superior super fast movement, you can get up close and personal to who Ever you want in a split second. So shotguns are definitely a nice weapon category and the Strun is an absolutely not good weapon. But Blackie, why is it on the top beginner weapon list if it's not a good weapon? Well, pretty simple, it's mastery rank 1 and to be fair, you cannot expect mastery rank 1 weapons to be objectively good, however, on the first couple of planets, in the first couple of game hours, the Strun is absolutely going to be good enough to make your brain do the good chemicals, and it is a lot of fun to use. And one thing that's also super nice is you can already buy it pre-built from just a couple of credits from the market and use it right away. In the build in the background, I used a status heavy approach because I tried to fiddle in some viral effects into the mix. Uh, believe me, that is not a good idea. And you can also see that I'm not even one-shotting every enemy. Uh, so if you do the strun, go with a pure damage approach, use the element that is strong against the faction you're up against, and then you're gonna get quite some nice one hits until I would say mid star chart. But to be fair, after the first couple of planets, your mastery rank is gonna exceed one and uh, you're gonna want to switch to something nicer. Something like the boar. The boar doesn't just look like the strun, it also works pretty similarly with one big exception and that is the boar is a fully automatic shotgun. And if you ever play Call of Duty or any other PvP shooter then you know fully automatic shotguns make the enemy team go ree, which means they're doing the killing and so does the boar. The boar is not accessible on Mastery Rank 1, but on Mastery Rank 2, which means probably your second day of playing, which is also very early in the game, but the boar has one significant advantage. Due to its fully automatic nature, it is amazing, especially when you're being crowded from a lot of close-range enemies. Say you're going up against infested, you have a lot of those close-range infested right onto your toes. You pull out the boar, hit the trigger, and in a split second, believe me, you're gonna make yourself some nice breathing room. Problem is, just like the Strun, the board doesn't really have any later game potential. You can comfortably go like mid star chart, I would say, and be fine, but after that you wanna upgrade. And that's not the end of the line, unfortunately, because due to its fully automatic nature, the boar has a bit of a problem with its ammo economy. Meaning, if you rely on solely the boar carrying you through the entire mission, you most likely will find yourself somewhere mid-mission and realize, oh crap, I'm out of ammo, what am I gonna do? So if you're using the boar, I suggest coupling it with a potent secondary or melee weapon that can do the heavy lifting when the boar is not in use anymore. But apart from that, I would still recommend using it in early game because it is a lot of fun and gives you a nice feeling of being powerful. To get the blueprint, you only need to head over to Mars and kill a lot of those Grenier shotgun troopers there because they're the ones who drop the blueprint, then assemble it in the foundry and you get yourself the boar. Coming up next is our first assault rifle of the day and that would be the Boltor. The Boltor is a fully automatic assault rifle, looks like a spine and shoots heavy bolts that can even nail enemies onto walls and if that's not cool, then I don't know what is. With a healthy fire rate, magazine size and damage output, the Boltor will absolutely last you through some planets. And the best thing about it is, you get the blueprint for free as soon as you finish the Venus to Mercury junction, so you don't even have to spend any money on it. Crit and status, however, are pretty poor, so I personally wouldn't mod for them. And one thing also worth mentioning is, the bolts fired by the Boltor are not hit scan, like the Breton projectiles, for example, meaning you have to pre-aim when shooting at moving targets at a certain range. 
usually in the narrow corridors of Warframe levels. That shouldn't be that big of a deal because most enemies, if they're moving, they're moving towards you anyway. But just note, if you're, for example, out in the plains of Eidolon in the open world, the Boltor might actually not be the best of choices. And as if I intentionally arranged the weapons in the following order, the next one is actually the exact opposite of the Voltor, and that would be the Vectis. The Vectis is a rifle also accessible from Mastery Rank 2 on by just purchasing the blueprint from the market, and it is the first sniper rifle we're gonna encounter. And if you ever played a video game, then you probably know what a sniper rifle is used for. In the close and narrow corridor environments of the most levels in Warframe, I personally would strongly suggest not playing a sniper rifle except you're really, really, really good at aiming. But if you find yourself out in the open, for example on the open worlds, Plains of Eidolon or Valis Cambian Drift, then having a sniper rifle can be really nicely to keep yourself at a safe distance while raining down heavy damage on the unsuspecting enemies. And also one cool thing about it, or about sniper rifles in Warframe in general is, if you zoom in, you get an additional crit chance boost, meaning you're gonna hit a lot of critical hits on your enemies, dealing a ton of damage, one hitting most of them, especially if you hit the head. So if you're a good marksman and you also find yourself enjoying the open world content Warframe offers, then the Vectis might be a great choice for early game for you. However, if you're not that much out in the open or you simply don't like aiming, then I suggest passing on this one. Which also concludes Mastery Rank 2, so let's head on over to the Mastery Rank 3 weapons, starting out with the Paris Bow. If you like the ninja aspect of Warframe, then you probably already picked the MK1 Paris right in the tutorial and had a lot of fun with it, and even if after using it for 3 Mastery Ranks you still enjoy yourself a nice bow, then I suggest you throw the MK1 in the trash and use the normal Paris, because the standard Paris is a upgrade to the MK1 variant in every way. With a crit chance of 30% and a 2.0 multiplier, just throwing in one crit chance mod can yield you a ton of crits, nailing enemies to wall, doing a crap load of damage, and you can even hit multiple enemies with just one arrow. So if you're a precise player and you like silent and deadly damage output, then the Paris is absolutely a weapon to go for. However, if you see yourself more as a gunslinger, you like the John Rambo approach and you really like fighting hordes of enemies at once, well, the Paris might not be the weapon for you, because as a precise deadly one-target tool, it is not really suited for dealing with hordes of enemies at once. Blueprint can also be bought from the market, simply go to the foundry, build it and you have yourself the Paris. But enough with the precision long-range tools, let's look into some more melee weapons, getting over to the Tipedo. Coming in at Mastery Rank 3, the Tipedo is a really nice weapon that honestly surprised me a lot. First of all, it's a staff weapon, meaning you have yourself some more melee range compared to, let's say, a Skana or a Sword and Shield combination. And also, it comes with a base crit and status chance of both 20%. Meaning, this one is not only good on the first couple of planets, but with some actually good mods, you can easily clear the entire star shot with it and even take it into Sword and even Arbitration if you like to. Of course, there are objectively better staffs later in the game, but given the fact alone that this Mastery Rank 3 staff already has the potential to be taken into later game activities shows how good it really is. And that's not all, it also comes with an innate depolarity slot, meaning it already begs you to throw a cold mod onto this and go for viral status effects, which I also did in the footage in the background and it worked really nicely. With just this couple of mods, it's already tearing through mid-range star chart enemies and it's also a lot of fun to use. To get your hands on this, all you need to do is simply go over to the market, buy the blueprint and assemble it from the foundry. One thing worth mentioning, however, is in order to build it, you need the kunai and the bow as weapons already pre-built in your inventory because those are manufacturing components for the Tipedo, meaning all in all you need to build two other weapons in order to build this one. It is going to be a bit more expensive than your standard built from resources weapon, but if you ask me, it's absolutely worth it. And that concludes Mastery Rank 3. And going into MR4, there's something that occurred to me while testing all those weapons for the video. Most Mastery Rank 1 to 3 weapons are very basic and quote unquote boring. Boring in a way that they don't really have a specific character, you know? Their base stats are set in a way that they don't allow for advanced builds, you know? They don't have a lot of crit, they don't have a lot of status chance, and the best thing you can really do with them is just throw in as much dumb damage mods as you can and try to get the best out of it. 
However, with the transition to Mastery Rank 4 weapons, we see a shift in that. Because MR4 is the first Mastery Rank that really features some interesting weapons with also some maybe weird mechanics and more interesting options to build them. And the first MR4 weapon on our list is the Heck. If you've ever seen a Best Beginner Weapons in Warframe video in the last five years, you can bet that the Heck was featured in every single one of them. And the reason for that is, it's simply that good. A lot of players say, once they had the Heck, that was the first time in the game they actually felt really powerful, and I fully believe that. The Heck is a four-barrel Grenier shotgun, and that means you have four shots in the magazine before having to reload, and it deals a crap ton of damage. Most of it is puncture, which means it does a little bit of bonus damage against Grenier armor. When it comes to crit and status chance, the heck is not really that interesting to be honest, but the base damage is so high that it more than makes up for this. In the background footage, admittedly, it doesn't look that impressive, but the reason for that is, as you also saw, the build I'm running here is just three cheapo mods, nothing more. And the mission that I'm running here is on Pluto. That means these are the strongest Corpus Star Chart enemies the game has to offer. So I'm running a Mastery Rank 4 weapon with only a couple of cheapo mods against the strongest Corpus enemies on the Star Chart, and I'm still scoring almost one hit on every single one of them. So imagine you throw some more mods onto this, or let's just say you're fighting against enemies at an actually more reasonable level with this one, you're gonna absolutely massively rule the battlefield. So I would recommend the hack to absolutely every player who likes a more action-based approach. Just go over to the market, purchase the blueprint, build it, and you got yourself a nice, a really nice shotgun. And the best thing is, if you really enjoy the Hex gameplay and you're sad that it's only an early game weapon with no late game potential, then don't worry, there are two more advanced Hex variants later in the game that you can acquire, and they are also really powerful, even against very late game enemies. Next up on our list is the Quanta, and the Quanta is a really, really interesting weapon. The Quanta is a somewhat foldable laser rifle, which deals innate electricity damage, so we already got ourselves innate elemental damage, which, as you can tell, I personally like a lot because it allows us to mod for combined elements more easily. But not only that, it comes with 16% crit chance and a 2.2 multiplier, which is not that bad given the mastery rank, and what's even better, 24% base status chance. That's a lot for Mastery Rank 4, and you're gonna see yourself dealing a decent amount of status effects when engaging with your enemies. However, there's even more, because the Quanta also has a secondary fire mode, and if you like geometry, then you absolutely need to go and get the Quanta right now, because the secondary fire mode shoots out a cube-shaped bomb that you can detonate by shooting it while it is floating in the air, which is super nice for killing enemies behind cover, or around corners, or simply laying down AoE damage over a couple of grouped-up enemies. And looking at the video material in the background, you probably see what I meant when I said on Mastery Rank 4, the weapons start to be more gimmicky and more interesting than the 1 to 3 ones, and the Quanta is a great example for this. If you want to play it for yourself, then absolutely feel free to do so. You can get the blueprint from the Corpus Lab in your clan's dojo, then head over to your foundry, build it, and have fun. Next up is another Corpus Assault Rifle, also acquired from the Corpus Lab in the Clan Dojo, unfortunately, and not from the regular market, but this one was also a real powerhouse, and I was super amazed by its performance, because back in the day when I leveled it, I can remember it to be super uninteresting, and right now I just had a blast playing it. As you see in the background, I took it out against corrupted enemies in the void, and as we all know, corrupted enemies have the highest HP pool and armor out of the enemy factions, and you can see that Dara is dealing really nicely with them, even given this super cheapo build that I run here. If you like standard issue assault rifles, then the Dara is absolutely for you, with a high fire rate, a decent magazine capacity, a good base damage, and also a status chance of over 20%, this one has some great potential to even clear enemies all over the star chart without any problems. Only thing you might want to look out for is that, just like the Boltor, the Dera is not hitscan, so if the enemies are further away and moving, you might have to pre-aim a bit, however, the Dera's projectiles travel significantly faster than the Boltor's ones and are more precise, so you shouldn't have that big of a problem with it. Up next, we have a secondary weapon, and that is the Nucor. Oh well, the Nucor, that's a really interesting one. 
If you have a bit more experience with Warframe, then you probably know that the Kuva variant of the new core is one of the, if not the most played secondary weapon in super high level content, and the reason for this is the high status chance. And also the normal variant we're looking at here comes in at 29% base status chance, so that is a real lot, especially for Master Rank 4. What the new core basically is, is a laser shooting pistol, just like the Quanta, just as a secondary weapon. It does innate radiation damage, which to be honest I don't really care about a lot, because radiation is nothing really useful. However, with the high status chance, I personally suggest if you can, you mod for viral, because viral status effects, as we all know, make the enemies more vulnerable to your damage, and with this high status chance you're gonna deal a whole lot of those viral procs, meaning the enemies are gonna die really fast. Also, if you like a more active playstyle involving switching your weapons or shooting with a gun and then striking with a melee weapon, I can only recommend the new core because of this status potential. That's also how it's used in high level content, spreading viral effects on the enemies to make them more vulnerable and then finishing them off with the primary weapon or the melee weapon that are actually designed for doing the damage. So the new core itself is actually not the weapon to be used to deal the damage in your setup, but to pave the way for the damage dealing weapons to actually be way more efficient. And given the fact that that's probably going to be your playstyle in the high level anyway, because that's the meta right now, it's not wrong to start this practice maybe a bit sooner. The blueprint for the new core is acquired from the Grenier lab of your clan's dojo. And if you're looking for a good melee weapon to maybe combine with the Kuba new core, then look no further than our next one, and that would be the Guandao. Just like the Tipedo, the Guandao is a staff melee weapon. However, unlike the Tipedo, unfortunately you have to be in a clan to be able to access it. The Guandao is a really cool one. Not only that it looks really sweet, it also has a standard 28% crit chance with a crit multiplier of 2.2. Meaning if you toss on some crit mods, you're gonna have a crit firework when it comes to fighting your enemies. On the other end of the spectrum, however, the status chance is abysmally low at only 4%. Meaning the Guandao unfortunately doesn't scale as nicely as the Tipedo when it comes to enemies above level 50, you know? That's where the enemies have more armor, that's where you need to armor strip, that's where you really need to rely on your status effects, and that is where the normal Guandao isn't really that proficient anymore with the low status chance of just 4%. However, up until this point, crit is stronger than status usually, and as we said, you want to pair the Guandao, for example, with the new core that is responsible for dealing the status then, and if you run this setup, the Guandao is going to be amazing with this high crit chance and crit multiplier. So I suggest you decide for yourself. You don't need the Guandao and the Tipedo, decide for only one of them and decide according to what playstyle you personally prefer. Do you want to use another weapon for dealing the status effects and then using the staff to finish him off? Or do you want to run the staff solo, dealing the status and the damage at the same time? And the next entry on our list is probably the most interesting out of all 15 that we're gonna cover today. And that would be the Xorus. The Xoris is a glaive type melee weapon and you can get it from finishing the deadlock protocol quest. So you don't need to buy anything, you don't need to farm anything, finish the quest and you're gonna have yourself the Xoris. But what makes the Xoris so interesting now? The reason is, the Xoris, out of all the weapons we've looked at today, is probably the only one which is still played in the absolute apex level range. You know, the players with thousands of in-game hours, they occasionally still play the Xoris and that is for one simple reason. As you probably observed, all melee weapons in the game have a combo counter system. The more hits you land, the higher your combo counter goes. And the higher the combo counter, the better for your damage output. However, if you don't land a hit for a couple of seconds, your combo counter goes down to zero right away. Once you finish the quote-unquote main story of the game, you will have access to a spoiler mode, which I'm not gonna go into right now, but that one will allow you to freeze your combo counter somewhat and make it not instantly go down to zero again if you don't hit an enemy all the time. However, we're talking about new player weapons and not finish the main story player weapons. So the Xoris is the only melee weapon in the game that has no decaying combo counter. Meaning, no matter if you hit enemies all the time or you don't hit them at all, your combo counter is not going to go down. That's what's making the weapon so attractive not only to beginning players, but also to very high level veterans if they don't want to use that specific method for some reason, they can always rely on the Xoris and so can you. 
To get the most out of it, my personal suggestion would be to head over to the Cambrian Drift, you know, the open world on demos, make the bounties there because those can yield you Weeping Wounds and Blood Rush. Those are two mods that tie your crit and status chance to your combo multiplier. And if your combo multiplier hangs at 12x all the time because it cannot go down anymore, that means those mods make your crit and status chance on the weapon absolutely go into oblivion. You can also see it here in the background. Do you know any other beginning player melee weapon that can deal orange crits? I personally don't and the Xoris does this no problem with Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds. With the base crit chance of 20%, a 2.4x multiplier and 18% status chance, that is also a really nice point to start at. And even though I personally don't like the playstyle of glaive type weapons that much, the stats speak for themselves and you can see the damage, the crits, the everything that I deal here. If you have access to the Xoris, if you have access to the Deadlock Protocol quest, absolutely do it, get the Xoris, keep it, because you're gonna love it even in very late game. And last, but definitely not least, is probably going to be the most fun to play weapon on our list today, and that would be the Aklax. Do you know what a Desert Eagle is? If you ever played a video game in your life, chances are very high you know that. And you also know that the Desert Eagle is absolutely deadly, but the recoil kicks in your face pretty badly. Well, the Lex is the Desert Eagle of Warframe, and it does exactly what you would expect the Desert Eagle to do. Obliterate everything on the other side of the barrel, and obliterate your forehead if you don't hold it tightly. And the Aklex, as the name suggests, is an akimbo variant of the Lex, meaning two Desert Eagles, and that is a lot of power and a lot of fun to play. The Aklex is so good because it has a base damage of 130, which is absolutely astronomical, especially for Mastery Rank 4 weapons. And the good thing is, if you like this type of playstyle, you can already get the normal Lex, you know, the single variant, on Mastery Rank 3, which you will also have to do, because in order to get the Aklex, you need to have two normal Lexes first, and then combine them to get the Aklex. However, personally, I suggest as soon as you have access to it, use the Aklex variant. That means you don't have to reload as often, because you basically get two magazines and the reload time on the Aklex is only marginally higher than on the normal X, so it's not even double the reload, meaning you do more damage per minute than with the normal variant. Also, one great thing about the Aklex is, due to its very high damage per projectile, enemies are gonna die very fast, and that means you conserve a lot of your ammo. With the Aklex, you're not gonna run low on ammo at all. I could not imagine a scenario where an Aklex player would actually run out of ammo. If you can remember, early in the video when we talked about the Boar Automatic Shotgun, I said the ammo economy on this one isn't really good and you should probably pair it with a secondary or melee weapon that makes up for this. And the Aklex would be the ideal companion weapon for the Boar. With the Boar being super strong in close encounters, the Aklex is the exact opposite. Bring in power and precision to range while at the same time being very conservative on your ammo pool, that would be a great pairing. And also, as you can see in the background right here, I'm running a mission on Zedna. If you take a look at the star chart, you know Zedna is the very end of the star chart, meaning the enemy levels don't get much higher in normal star chart content. And even though I'm just running a very, very cheap build, I basically one-hit headshot everything right here, and it's so much fun to play. The gun sound, the recoil, the splatter sound of enemy heads. This gun makes your brain do even more good chemicals than the boar shotgun. And also very nice if you want to flex about your headshot precision with your friends. But what is your personal favorite beginner weapon? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd really be interested in hearing which weapons you rocked when you just started out with Warframe and what your opinions were on these. Also, if you have another suggestion that you think should be in the list, also put it down in the comments and let's see which suggestions we get together here. Also, like the video if you liked it, and if you are a Warframe beginner and you need some more tutorials or guides on Warframe mechanics, on weapons, on Warframes, then feel free to leave a sub because we cover all that stuff on this channel and there is way more to come. So, see you in the next one, and until then, of course, good loot.